One of the um, different voices that emerges among IOC stakeholders recently is about the committee's uh, recommendation to allow Belarusian and Russian athletes to compete as uh, individual neutral. Well, IOC has always been against the idea of politicizing sports. So what role do you think IOC could play in upholding this ideal going forward? Uh, there again, it's about our values and uh, our mission is uh, to unify the world. Uh, that means uh, to bring uh, everybody uh, together in a peaceful competition. This we can only achieve if we are uh, politically neutral. Uh, it does not mean that we ignore politics. You know, right, not apolitical to it. No, the world is run by politics and uh, not by a sports organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, we are acknowledging, this we are respecting, and this we have to take into uh, consideration. But we cannot uh, take uh, political sides in a, in a, in a political uh, dispute. Uh, we uh, have a very clear uh, position uh, that uh, you cannot uh, sanction or punish athletes uh, for uh, any political acts of, uh, of uh, their, their government. Uh, we want uh, to make our very humble and uh, modest uh, contribution to hopefully uh, achieving uh, peace. I think uh, we should talk less about uh, the wars and conflicts and confrontation. Mm -hmm. uh, that we should uh, talk more about the solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, for all these uh, challenges and uh, problems. And uh, the human solution, mm -hmm. and we are, have a humanitarian mission, mm -hmm. the human solution is peace. And you have also previously said that the Olympics should be a haven from uh, politics. I was for the first time really confronted uh, with this uh, contradiction between uh, the role of sport and politics and uh, this was at uh, the Olympic Games uh, in Montreal 1976. There I, I was as an athlete uh, there and uh, one morning I was uh, looking out of uh, the window of our room in the, the Olympic uh, village on the, and saw on the main square a big number of uh, African, apparently African athletes mm -hmm. uh, standing there, you know, with luggage, uh, all with uh, hanging heads, and uh, some of them you could see, you know, that they they were crying and uh, uh, holding each other and uh, trying to, to to gain some strength. And and then I was told, uh, oh, they they have to leave the Olympic uh, Village because uh, their governments are calling uh, them back because of a political boycott of, uh, of uh, the Games. And, you know, this was uh, an extremely sad moment. Four years after, uh, with the boycott uh, and the discussion in my country about the boycott, uh, for me, it was already based on this, uh, on this experience uh, from uh, 76. And uh, this is why I was uh, fighting uh, with all the small force I could offer uh, there as uh, the athlete's representative and uh, then uh, we lost uh, uh, this fight. Actually, it's uh, the reason uh, why I'm sitting here today, uh, because I do not want uh, to future generations of athletes happening what happened to us with the boycott. And this is how it started uh, in the in the sports management uh, side mm -hmm. for me. And therefore, I definitely think, and uh, there we all agree, it's even enshrined in the Olympic Charter mm -hmm. that we have to bring all the National Olympic Committees, all the athletes from all National Olympic Committees together. And uh, this is why we're also working hard uh, to uh, have uh, all the 206 uh, NOCs uh, then hopefully next year in Paris.